finished almost with fuchsia number 54, the lipstick we shared from Sephora. The white case shows no brand or maker, I just know this one is your favorite. You carried this lipstick in your coat pocket, in your purse, with your checkbook, beside your keys with the high heel keychain. I continue using it, tapping the remaining sassy color on my lips until the last dab is gone. Talk with it on, smile with it on. Yours, mine, us, still. This poem is called Vision One. 10.13 p.m. in my apartment in Astoria, red couch, you slept here. Dial 732-349-0894. In my current life, the number no longer works since your death on July 26, 2012. Tonight, I imagine a different outcome when I type in the digits. Hello, you answer the phone. That familiar, friendly voice, it is glorious. Mom, you're there. Listen, there is so much I need to say. I'm sharing your words, our story on stage. My goal is to publish our collection of essays and poetry, maybe even our emails. This is how it's supposed to be, my baby doll, you respond. I am delighted poetry is in your life. I believe it brings us emotions and permits us to have those emotions. Without poetry, there is not music. Mom, you wrote about losing your vision in your early 20s. Something happened on my way through life. Somewhere between Holy Angels Academy college in Colorado, my good friend was lost. Sometime between young adulthood apartments for one and middle age, I grieved. Somehow, when I thought nothing could happen to me, a miracle believer, I lost my good friend. Vision two, put away the blood glucose machine, the testing strips, the lancets, the needles, goodbye. You worship the ocean, mom. We sit side by side on a park bench, Lavalette Beach at the Jersey Shore, munching boardwalk fries without worry over type one sugar, highs and lows. Mom, it's so hard to do this without you physically here. I say this as I squeeze your soft hands, noticing the familiar stack of bangle bracelets displayed on each wrist. You're still like a gypsy with your bright beads and sterling silver. We climb to the top of the sugary, Gypsum dudes at White Sands in New Mexico. We sip lattes and read John Didion essays. I pull out my notebook. Mom, I have our poems here about how we survived divorce. You as the wife and me as the daughter. What he left behind. I wrote, he left behind more than the customized sign that read Harmony Bar out in the den. A pantry full of red enchilada sauce the amethyst ring my mother bought him for his birthday on February 5th. He left behind a life, a wife and a daughter. He left behind a past bent, blended with lies he'd rather forget. Maybe that's why we got stuck calling out the garbage finale. Mom, you said this is the last poem I shall ever write about him. Every good memory has been shredded, photographed, pasted, and piled in the cardboard shoebox in the closet. Once, a psychologist told me to open the box at a specific time, spread the contents on the quilt, and think. You need to set aside an hour for remembrings like this. Cry, rant, scream, tear, and then return the box to its closet corner. I do, I do not want to do that anymore. I want him gone forever. He deserves nothing from me ever again. My mom is still with me on stage, in the chair beside me and on this page, I see her and I hear her. She is not holding my elbow when she walks with me to the Bowery Poetry Club on Sunday. Be brave, be bold with your own work, chickadee. Find joy in this morning. Discover today and tomorrow without living in yesterday. Our love grows like a wildfire. It has a life of its own and spreads in so many directions. Remember, I love you every day. On this Wednesday, decide the world is an excellent spot to be in, alive and celebrating. Put aside the past for today and just take it out when it feels right. This one is called A Blessing. It's hard to, for me to remember, she said, when I went home to visit. 
but I believe she'd be two years younger than you if she had lived. And so, as I watched her sip the black coffee, she said, it was a miracle for me to get pregnant at all. And to think of the night I lost her with you alone so many years later. And I believe she said things happen for a reason. But that doesn't make them any easier since I feel lost without the daughter and sister you never knew and never will know. That is something that I think about every so often to realize how old she'd be. 20. Two years younger than my beautiful blonde baby in college. She touched my warm cheek. You are the blessing in my life, she said, and wrapped her arms around me. I love you more than anything else in this world. A blessing is what she said. This poem was written by my mom for me as a little girl, and it's called Butterfly. One of my friends turned it into a song, too, which is pretty cool. Butterfly. My daughter stoops to catch the butterfly who flits away from her enchanting touch. This movement adds a magic beauty now, her fingers forming wings that kiss the wind. These summer days are like the butterflies. No key will lock the flitting hours. These wings make flight of time. The sun's a dancing friend, inviting flowers grasshoppers for lunch. In summer, Jennifer has wings to fly, enchanting flowers, bugs and pennies wish, in shopping centers ponds. No secret dreams in flight, her kisses flutter past my lips. The butterflies a watercolor blurred in motion. Daughters blur the purple pinks and yellow reds, of moving suns at dusk and dawn. Their haste of light, they reach for moons. This butterfly, this Jennifer, untamed, frightened, ballet dancers, curtsy grin. Their audience, the sprinklers, grassy hills and mountain tops that reach for clouds like them. To capture them, not possible today. Like breezes, cotton candy, tears and snow. A morning's hug, an evening's tickle turn. Around, they've gone adventuring ahead. The butterfly, the children freely fly. On life's unending winds, their wings a song. <laughs> This is another by my mother that I feel like when I read it, I'm like, this is me feeling me fetish. The power is inside of me, deep, deep inside. Everyone has power unique to them. I want to discover mine, to never forget I have it, to fully use it in my life. I want to find the parts of me I've never met, the talents never seen before, the intelligence never used. Maybe I will write a song, play it, or sing it. The romantic part of me will live in the old evenings by oceans, rivers, and lakes, on fishing trips, in Colorado mountains, on Christmas Eves and New Year's Eves, in birthday candles and anniversary poems. It will live, not merely exist in daydreams. I will be what I can be, but what I am not yet. I will love more easily, forgive more readily, judge less freely, listen quietly and quietly hear my thoughts. On impulse I will do and not wait to wish I'd done it. All things will not have thought before action. Unplanned, uncounted, unworried, unpacked, I will go. I will still cry and laugh, embrace and hide, but without so often looking back to judge myself, my power will come from me, changing me and so changing the world because sometimes I believe the world is only me and my reactions. Hell yeah, I love that poem, thank you. And I'll have one more, that's right. Here you go, girl. Here you go. Thank you. And this is my poem, Renewal. From the early autumn, holidays have filled me. 
anticipation, pleasure, self-satisfaction, daydreams, sharings, greetings, nostalgia, romance, disappointments, conversations, mysteries, my imagination. I have been remembering and forgetting. Now I am empty. In January, those symbols I was holding onto are gone. It is time to rebuild me inside. The mystery of me is that there is still emptiness to be filled. Thank you.